Hello and welcome to the hostings for the postgraduate officer for 2020-21. We've sent your questions to the candidates and they've replied either with a written message or a video recording. Um, if they haven't sent in any response and unfortunately they've been unable to participate in this particular hustings. Um, so without further ado, let's go on to the first question. Uh, the first question is, what will you do to improve communication for postgraduate students studying on non-traditional timeframes, for example, starting in January? This is a really good question and so many students fall into this category. I believe it first starts with making sure our communication channels and information is always up to date and easy to find for our students. For those starting in January, for example, we have a refreshers fair and that's a great way for uh, students to either meet other new students or existing students. My main plan for this revolves around the handbook information that they will receive. I want all postgraduate students, regardless of when they arrive, to have a great induction. Uh, and this revolves around making sure that the guidebook uh, has all of the relevant information and um, communication uh, channels necessary to ensure that they have a smooth transition into their new university life and also have an important list of contacts of all of the key people that they might need to contact like, throughout the year. Thank you. Um, so this is a very interesting question because we obviously have a lot of students who uh, join on non-traditional timeframes, uh, especially in January and so on. So I think I'd take a two-step approach to this. Uh, so firstly, I'd create a, a mailing list, which would include uh, all of the students on non-traditional timeframes. So if you're joining in January, you would be on this list. And what we would do is we'd organize targeted events where you would get to meet other people with similar start dates as you who are in a similar stage of the Nottingham journey and will have similar end dates. So this will, in, will help you find your community. Now, the next step is to integrate everyone who, who joins on the non-traditional time frame with a general cohort. And this would again be done by... Um, by organizing events and through targeted emails. So I think this is actually a problem that is quite easy to solve. Uh, it's just a matter of creating a separate mailing lists and conducting targeted marketing. Uh, the second question is, I haven't been able to attend any events this year and without these, uni can be quite an isolated experience as I'm not on campus. How can you offer more to students like me? Thank you for your question. I feel like the most important aspect here is that we have a union and university uh, that simply doesn't run all of its events physically on campus. Uh, we now need to be more digital than ever considering the current scenario that we're in um, and this should remain the case uh, regardless of uh, what's going on in current events at the moment. I want to change the constitution of the postgraduate network to add a part-time and learners distance rep. Uh, and this will work with the network to ensure that there is plenty of digital events where students who do not live on campus or either come to campus often are easily able to partake in those activities. Um, also, the well-being and well affair cafe that I want to run monthly, um, that can easily be run digitally as it can be run physically uh, side by side. And so it should never be a great hassle for someone to run a digital event because it's always more inclusive and that's what, should, what we should be as a students' union. Thank you. So this is something that I've experienced myself. Uh, being a postgraduate can be a little socially isolating since there aren't a lot of, exp a lot of opportunities to meet people from outside your course. Um, so what I like to do is organize more events on campus, but also organize a lot more events off campus. The goal is to create as many inclusive events as possible. So it would include things such as um, ice skating, movie nights, and uh, even night nights out. Um, but over the last couple of months with the COVID-19 situation, I've also understood how important it would be to include digital in a new event strategy. So I'd also look into hosting more digital events, such as virtual pub quizzes um, or a chat roulette feature where students can be matched up with other students from different courses and interact with them. Or even virtual nights out that uh, a lot of clubs in Nottingham like Ocean and Crisis have been doing. So the strategy will be to combine on-campus events with on off-campus and digital events so everyone can attend them. Question 3. Like myself, most postgraduate students have additional responsibilities to studying. I'm a full-time worker and have childcare responsibilities. How will you ensure their needs are continually met? Uh, for support throughout this and how will you communicate their needs to the university? 
This is an excellent question. Many postgraduate members fall into this uh, different category of networks. For example, as a postgraduate student, you'll have a lot of international, so they'll fall into the international network or the mature students network as well. The key plan here really is firstly to make sure that the events that you do uh, all year round are varied and at different points of the year. For example, not everyone can make a classic seven o'clock time uh, on a weekday event, for example. So I think it's very important to make sure that you vary uh, the times and the locations of your event for better inclusivity. But also, as I said in my earlier answer, it's also important to keep digital events as well, because not everyone will have access to be able to come to those physical locations. Communication plays a vital role in this. Through the welfare and well-being sessions or my bi-weekly sessions where I will spend a bit of time working in different campuses, students will always have the ability to speak to me regarding any issues that they may have. They also are more than welcome to come to my office or rearrange an email with me if they don't feel uh, comfortable or unable to come onto the campus. As a students' union leader, my biggest priority is supporting our students and our members and that is all of you. So any issues that is brought forward to me, um, it is my job to be able to discuss that with both the university and the union in order to make sure that we have a suitable way of tackling this issue. Thank you so much. So I think we need to look at this from two perspectives. Um, first, we need to make sure your academic needs are met. Um, for that, I'm creating a tool that will provide students with academic coursework and exam support throughout the year. Next, uh, we have a system of course representatives who I'll be working with closely to make sure that individual course related needs are met. Third, to increase transparency, I'm creating a suggestion box feature. So anytime you face any problem with your course or any, any problems in general, you can send in a suggestion and I'll be reading each one of them and trying to make sure that your needs are met. Second, we need to make sure that we fulfill your social needs. So um, we'll also be creating a lot of digital events, so which you can fit in within your uh, calendar and within your schedule. And then you can still have the chance to meet and interact with different postgraduates, giving you a more fulfilling experience. The final question is, as a part-time master's student, resources I'm given are often lesser quality to those that I receive as a full-time undergrad. How would you ensure moving forward teaching materials and sessions I'm provided with are the same standard as my undergraduate counterparts? Thank you for your question. Students doing a master's degree often pay a higher proportion of tuition fees than undergraduate students, so the quality of your teaching should not be less than undergraduate counterparts, but in certain areas, unfortunately, this is the case. I believe the first way to tackle this problem is through the education network. We have course reps which feed into faculty reps whom the education and the postgraduate officer meet with regularly to discuss the latest, issue, the latest issues brought to them and what they can do about this to further improve or lobby the university for change in their teaching standards and quality. I believe this is where my programme, which is called the Development of Postgraduate Initiatives, will come in. It will have members from the Education Network representatives and others uh, in different departments uh, and networks across the university and the union and the graduate school um, to further hold the university uh, account in its teaching standards and in, in other aspects too. And essentially the purpose of this is to make sure that not just the teaching quality, but all forms of uh, services that you receive from the university are sufficient for not just the uh, level of, of income that you're paying as a master's student, but also for the basic requirement of what you should be expected to receive from your quality and your teaching standards. Thank you so much. So this is something I've actually heard about from a lot of my fellow postgraduates. But before I can talk about the solution, I think it's very important to understand the problem. Um, so, uh, so we have many different courses and I think the resources that are needed will be different uh, in each course. So I think what's really important to do is to have a university-wide postgraduate survey to understand what are the sort of resources that students think would help them and that they need. Uh, to be able to improve the academic performance and do better than they're already doing. So once we understand what are these resources that we need to add on each uh, course specific level, we can start to create them and upload them. I've also mentioned that I'll be creating a tool that will provide students with year long academic coursework and exam support. So any such resources would be uploaded onto that tool. I think I would try and include this on Moodle so everyone can access this any time of the year. But first, it is important to understand. And that's it for the postgraduate officer hostings. Thank you to both of our candidates for contributing and best of luck to both of them. Uh, you can read their manifestos on the SU website and also vote until 1pm on Monday. So please go and do that if you haven't already. And look out for the results on 
Monday evening. Um, details will be on the SU social media sites. So thanks very much for watching.